Today I'm going to share with you a little bit of research that we did looking at nitrogen rate assessments in, in Timothy. So I'd like to acknowledge my cooperators, Don Llewellyn, Steve Franson, and Shannon Iberg. And uh, specifically, I'd like to thank the Washington State Hay Growers Association without their support on this. This was something they really wanted. It's one of the only things I think that they've supported directly out of their budget. Um, and so I want to give them a great thanks on that. And then the Washington State BioAg program that got this thing started and the International Plant Nutrition Institute, which also supported funds for this. So we really do have a lack of information on Timothy and, and how much nitrogen that you should put on a Timothy crop. And uh, this was exemplified by <coughs> me getting a phone call from NRCS saying we're trying to develop a nitrogen uh, recommendations. And so I called Steve Franson up and I said, hey, Steve, send it on over. And Steve looked at, told me, he says, nope, we don't have anything that's, that's published. And so, unfortunately, I haven't got anything published on this, but I am giving you this presentation. So hopefully, and it is in your proceedings there, so hopefully you have at least what, what I have put out. So I like to get pictures. And uh, so we planted this on September 26th in 2012. And this is at the Rosa Farm in uh, Washington State. I'm the regional forage specialist there, and I serve the Columbia Basin. So it was planted on August of 2012, and this picture was taken on the 26th. And you can see, have a nice stand. So coming into the next spring, <clears throat> I was this picture was taken on March 24th, and you can see on the left side the zero rate didn't look pretty yellow, and on the right side you can see 120 pounds of N applied on March 12th, 2013. Well, our irrigation water doesn't get turned on until probably about the second week of April. And so I think it's important for everyone that's putting on nitrogen early on on crops that can't, uh, don't have the water to, to uh, incorporate it with a half an inch of uh, irrigation to, to, to use something similar to Agritain here. Agritain, uh, otherwise known as NBPT, um, is, helps reduce nitrogen losses when we can't get things incorporated. And generally in our areas where we irrigate, we can do that, but the first cutting we cannot. And so um, these rates are all put on with Agritain. So again, fast forward to May 6th, you can see there the zero nitrogen plot still having some trouble growing there. And you can see it on the right side, 160 pounds of nitrogen per acre. Things look pretty green. So, you know, we wanted to find out a couple things that we wanted to find out. One is what tissue concentration um, is adequate at a certain specific stage so that we can give that to you farmers as use. And so the stem growth within a plant is very dis dis descriptive of a specific stage. And so if you dissect the plant, on the right, the plants on the right that are growing there, it had a stem that was six inches tall. Now you gotta take a razor blade out there and kind of split the stem a little bit to figure that out. So this is when our first time period is that we went out with the SPAD meter uh, to assess nitrogen. And so, and we also pulled leaves, uh, the flag leaf off the top of the plant, the full, full formed leaf off the top of the plant. And so those were our two indicators of how we're gonna assess whether we have adequate nitrogen or not. So this is what a spad meter looks like. It's just a little bitty thing that uh, you clamp onto the leaf. And the key to this thing is, is multiple readings. And so I recommend that wherever you're gonna go, you need to at least do 20, 20 readings. This takes a little bit of time, but it gives you an instantaneous reading um, of that nitrogen. You see a, a number on there is a 23.2. I told you how green that leaf is, okay? And from that greenness, we get an indication of the nitrogen status of the plant. Now, I'm gonna kind of go through the steps of using a, a SPAD meter for nitrogen use. And the key thing there is that you need to have a nitrogen-rich strip whereby you have a standard that you can say this is adequately fertilized, okay? Uh, this helps eliminate some of the variation between varieties 
and, and other things that might be environmental there. And so um, we, I just suggest maybe doing a double spread of your fertilizer on a strip of field. I, I suggest doing it not lengthwise where you're putting up hay so you don't get some high nitrogen hay, but go crosswise with the way you put up your hay so that uh, it doesn't interfere with your, uh, you know, with the nitrates in your hay. You know, check the field with a spad meter when the stems inside the Timothy plant are about six inches long. Do spad meter readings at this stage have been around the first week of May in, in the Columbia Basin. So I collect at least 20 readings in each field, and also you're going to need 20 readings in that double spread area so that you know what an adequate um, area looks like in your meter. You divide the, the reading in your whole field divided by your nitrogen rich strip, and that gives you what we call an RCM, or relative chlorophyll meter reading. You uh, read these recommendations from the table that I'm going to give you and apply the nitrogen through the sprinkler if necessary. At harvest time, uh, you know, you can also uh, core bales and submit the samples and see what the nitrogen is in that, and that'll give you some indication as, as well. First year came back about 9% was adequate. Okay, um, so the second, I, I, you know, I was trying to figure out what timing to do this, this, these readings at, and so we chose two times. This, believe it or not, was only a week later than the other one, so the Timothy's actively elongating, and so you have about 20 inch tall Timothy, and the growing point's about 26 inches long, so it tells you we're really close to boot stage. Okay, and I did a second reading there. Okay, now we fast forward to harvest. When you get to harvest and you have a field like this, you know that you didn't have enough nitrogen on, okay? <laughs> That's a zero rate plot. It looks pretty thin. That's what an 80 pound plot on June 3rd looked like. That's what 120 pounds looked like. 160 pound plot. 200 pound plot. Okay, and this is just an example of doing your, your, your nitrogen rich strip would be that those R's that are across the center. And it's better if you can get four sets of 20. The more samples the better you have your field, the better off you're gonna be. So again, I kind of went ahead of myself, but then again, you read your, your readings and divide it by your nitrogen rich strip readings, the average of all those. And um, so this is why Sometimes it's nice to be able to do an in-season assessment of your situation. If you start looking at the zero rate there on the left, you see the yield on the, on the horizontal axis, you'll see your, your March nitrogen rate with the urea with agrotane, and you can see that uh, on 2013 in Othello, you know, it, totally different than it would be at 2013 in Prosser. So I can't just give you a number and say, this is how much nitrogen you should put on your on your Timothy. So it's important to find a, a tool to try to figure this out. So I guess that's what I'm trying to show there is there's a lot of variation where the peak yield was reached. 2013, I just thought I'd show you this. This is kind of a good example of how you can see we, we had a very low uh, nitrogen field on this particular year. See the yield kind of, kind of go up and there on the right axis you have the protein content of that hay and you can kind of see that's where I come up with that nine percent protein in there um, you can see that right where the yield peaked we had about nine percent protein in the hay gives you a reference point 2014 it didn't work out quite as well uh, at the nine percent but you can kind of see there it was um, nine percent we were probably overplaying hay uh, the fertilizer just a little bit Okay, so now let's talk about what farmers like to talk about, and that's profit. And so what I've done here is I've taken the, assuming that we had $225 per ton Timothy hay that was sold, this is first cutting, and then assuming that the, uh, ag, you know, the uh, urea with agrotane was 50 cents a pound per actual pound of N, okay? Now with those assumptions, well, once again, you see that the optimum rate varied from 17 pounds to 133 pounds. 
and uh, just depending upon the year. So that was the optimum economic uh, rate that was there. So if you start taking the chlorophyll meter readings and you look at this and you say, okay, the adjusted gross return, basically, uh, that's what that is, is your price of your hay at, your, at those numbers I gave you, $225 a ton, and, the 50, and then you subtract the cost of the fertilizer off of that. That's my adjusted gross return. That's on the vertical axis. And then the chlorophyll, relative chlorophyll meter reading was on the, on the uh, x-axis or the horizontal axis. And what this shows is that um, it, it kind of separated out and gave us a nice result. We had an R square for, of uh, 0.71 or 0.72. And there's the regression, uh, the quadratic re regression that came with that. And um, I guess on this one, I assume $300 ton hay and 50 cents a pound. It must have been a year that the hay price was up a little bit. But anyway, at this particular price, the RCM of 0.87 was optimum. So again, that's the relative chlorophyll re reading from the, the field to the rich strip. And I just put there on the bottom that if say you were you were, you missed that by and it was 0.77, you would have lost $111 an acre. If you would have uh, um, raised it from 0.87 to 0.97, again you would you would have lost $97 per acre in profit. So I think this uh, any tool that you can use to kind of help you get in the ballpark is helpful, and hopefully this will be one that that farmers can can latch onto and use. So the second thing that we wanted to do was look at what percent nitrogen was in that upper leaf. So the idea of the chlorophyll meter reader is you have instantaneous knowledge of how much nitrogen you to put on. The tissue test, you've got to take that, the samples and the leaf, haul them to, the, to, the, um, to wherever you, you get your uh, analysis done, your tissue analysis done, and then you, whenever they get that back, then you can go put the fertilizer on. So this, so here you can see that as uh, the, the horizontal axis, we have nitrogen concentration in the leaves, um, and then on the vertical axis, you see the nitrogen difference from the economic optimum. And so what this told us was that um, in the early planting, when the stems were six inches tall, the optimum vegetative uh, percent nitrogen was 3.15. And then the yellow line, it shows that if you waited an extra week, that you actually had to have a higher nitrogen concentration in that leaf of 3.36. Okay, so these are just kind of the recommendations that I've come up after doing three years worth of research on this and um, so you can see the art relative chlorophyll meter reading and the vegetative stage which is the one I recommend it seemed to be a little more accurate than the boot stage and if you go and then that's the amount of nitrogen fertilizer you would put on if you're below 0.85 that's how much you're short and negative numbers if you're above that that's the extra that you put on that you didn't need to so in conclusion, in-season adjustments to nitrogen fertilizer rates can be made if a well-fertilized strip is made through the field. The, the, the leaf tissue testing sufficiency level for yield for, uh, when, you're, when you're out there at six inch stem is, is 3.1% and at the boot stage is 3.38 and the SPAD meter RCM at 0.87 is what we found to be optimal. The relative chlorophyll meter and the leaf tissue testing both showed promise for in-season nitrogen assessment in Timothy hay production, uh, where the optimum nitrogen fertilizer rate varied depending on year from 85 to 135 pounds of N per acre, and that the vegetative stage where the stem is just six inches inside the, the leaves works better than the boot stage to make adjustments. Profit was maximized at an RCM of 0.85 in the vegetatives and in the earlier testing and 0.87 at the boot. And you know, somewhere around 9% is what you should be seeing as the protein in your hay. And then the tissue leaf nitrogen content at vegetative stage, the optimized economic yield at $300 a ton hay was 3.15 and 3.36 for the vegetative and boot stage respectively. And then I've 
shown you the table already for adjustments for deficiencies. And if there, I guess we'll wait for questions. For